Welcome to Bayesian Statistics, Bayes Theorem. Okay, so here's what we've covered so far. You can see all the stuff. If you haven't seen these yet, you might want to go back and watch the 13 other videos that precede this to help you come up to speed on it. It's actually not 13, but because at the beginning we talk about what is statistics. But we have almost everything here, uh, all the rules that we've came up with, and now we are out of space. So we're going to move on to Bayes' theorem in this particular video. And in the next video, we're going to look at another example, even though one will be presented here. All right, so what do we know? We know that conditional probability has this. I didn't write down the probability of f has to be greater than zero. We all understand that. And we know that it's not symmetric, meaning the probability e given f is not equal to the probability of f given e. So what we're looking for, is there a way to go between these two? And with just a little bit of thinking, you can come up with a simple way to make this work, right? Uh, multiplying both sides by P of F gives us P intersect, uh, the probability of P, or the probability of E intersect F, and this gives us this piece on this side, which we already knew. Now, if we just divide by the probability of E on both sides, then sure enough, this right here is what we're looking for, right? This is the probability of F given E. So the probability of f given e, if I have the probability of e given f, is multiply that by the probability of f over the probability of e. And so there's like this ratio that you multiply by. Now, um, this is not the actual Bayes formula, but in a sense, it is Bayes formula. Uh, so when you start thinking about this, the idea is to try to go between these uh, two given probabilities or conditional probabilities. So here's what we have. So we can go from the probability of E given F by multiplying by this ratio, and we end up with the probability of F given E. All right, so now that we have that, um, Bayes' theorem is typically given in terms of the law of total probability. So usually when you see things, you're talking about the probability of AI given B, which is the probability of B given AI times the probability of AI, uh, all over the sum of the probability of B given AJ times the probability of B, or probability of AJ, uh, where these form a partition of S. And this is the formula that we're really going to focus in on because this is the one that is most useful in our case, and this is uh, what we call Bayes' theorem. All right, so let's look at a quick example here. This is the most common type of example because it only requires two groups in it to make this happen. So we're only going to look at this one. Our next example in the next video is uh, considerably more complicated. So suppose a new test is created to identify people who have a specific disease. Suppose in the population it is known that about 4% of the people have the disease. The test reads positive 95% on people known to have the disease and reads positive on 2% of people who are known not to have the disease. So here we have a lot of information. Now, if I'm a physician, this might be enough information. Well, let's see what we have. So we have the probability that you have the disease just randomly popping you out of the population. You would see that it's 0.04. The probability that you test positive given you have the disease is 0.95, which is quite high if you think about it. It's going to test positive if you have it. And the probability that it tests positive, given that you don't have the disease, is quite low, 0 0.02. Well, we almost have what we need here. If you notice, we have D and we have D complement on, on the conditional probabilities. Well, we need D complement again, and we can come up with our probabilities. So D complement here, the probability of D complement is 1 minus the probability of D which is 1 minus 0 0.04 equals 0 0.96. So this is where we would employ one of those rules because we need to in order to pick up this other piece. Okay, now that I have this information, I just put it up here. If I'm a physician, I don't want any of these. I want the probability that you have the disease given you tested positive, right? That's really what you're interested in. It's like, oh, no, I've tested positive. Well, what's the probability you have the disease then? 
Well, this is where Bayes' formula really comes in and helps out. So the probability that you have the disease given positive is the probability that you tested positive given you had the disease times the probability you've had the disease. And you can see down here, the sum here is really easy uh, because there's only two groups, right? You're either diseased or you're not. So the probability of positive given disease times the probability of disease plus the probability of positive given you're not diseased times the probability of not diseased. Plug in all your numbers here and notice that these two are the same. So that works out nice. And you end up with this number here, 0. 0.6643. So we can tell the doctor someone who tests positive here, in this case, has a probability of 0. 0.6643 of having the disease. And that doesn't sound very high because look at this. This thing looks really good, right? If I stared at this, this looks really good. If you if you test positive, I mean, if you have the disease, you will test positive 95% of the time. And if you don't have the disease, you're only going to throw up a false positive 2% of the time. The problem lies in the fact that it's a pretty rare disease. So that's going to really drag this down. But keep that in mind. This is a simple example of how you can use Bayes' theorem to actually answer a question given information that isn't about what your question is about, really. So uh, we're going to look at a more complicated example in the next video. Uh, here are our is our formula sheet again. Now, I didn't put Bayes' formula on here because I can't fit it. So uh, I'm going to go back and see if I can, but probably won't be able to. But we have Bayes' formula, and now we can start using it. And... Once we have that and we understand it a little bit more, we can start doing Bayesian statistics with it. And the format that we'll go through is very different probably from what you would expect from a traditional statistics class. All right, so let's go on and check out the next example in the next video. See you there.